And we're on. <laughs> and today's guest, we've got Alan Meagie. First hey, of all, Alan, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show and taking the time to actually meet us. Thank you. You're a legend in the music industry. <laughs> Oasis, Primal Scream, what massive names. It's, uh, it's good to have you on, mate. How's Thank things you. been? Yeah, good. Yeah, just like really good. It's a Sunday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. Interesting time. <laughs> in London, Harley Street. We're doing all right, Alan. I always like to go back to the start with my guests. Obviously, yeah. you've had a great career and you've done massive things, but we'll go back to the start where you grew up and how you get involved in the music industry. Well, I, I was a, I was born in Govan Hill. And at five year old, I came up to uh, Mount Florida. And uh, I went to Mount Florida Primary. And that was pretty good. It was actually all right. And then I ended up, uh, I went to King's Park Secondary School. I was just dreadfully, uh, you know, just, I hated school. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, you know, I, I didn't take to it. And uh, I suppose I got my problem with authority and everything you know, at that school. You know, I mean, it was just like, you know, I just, I, I, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I just, I just really disliked getting told what to do. And uh, I left school with one O level, which was a, uh, which was a uh, arithmetic. I got a C, but I never, I never tried. I never, I never done anything. And then I ended up having a load of shit jobs. Uh, I worked in a building site. Uh, I made collars in a factory. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I had about three or four really crap jobs, and then I, um, I, I eventually, I, you know, I, I got a British Rail job you know, issuing bolts, and which was basically it's a job for nothing, but I used to get £75 a week as a kid, I was 16, 17, and, uh, and I'd done that for a couple of years before I came to London. And that's when, because people see the glitz in the glam life, and it is a great life down in London, but it is fucking crazy. Well, it was, he, well. it was he glamorous for me for a long, long time, do you know what I mean? I don't think it's ever really been that glamorous, but but I, I came down to London when I was like 19, and I, and I was homeless, essentially. You know, I would have been like, the reason there's so many homeless people, you, me, you and me are both involved in homeless stuff. Um, but when I, when I came down, I, I came off a train, I'd like literally five quid in my pocket, but I, I squatted for six months, James. And now nobody's allowed to squat because they basically arrest you if you squat. But that the whole houseless, uh, the homeless problem at the moment, uh, there's about some like 300,000 people homeless. It would be eradicated if you could if you could squat because that's what it was the seventies and eighties squatting culture the clash came out of squatting culture which was Joe Strummer was squatting um, you know and like me and Andrew Ennis that's the guy in the primals we came out of squatting culture because we both squatted yeah it's crazy because there's millions of empty flats everywhere there's oh, there like, is. millions of empty units a lot of people, people buy them as investments and don't live in them yeah they don't even live here they are empty and it'd be a good yeah, idea yeah. for anybody that's got properties yeah. the line empty just open them up let homeless yeah. people sleep in it yeah. especially the winter time the numbers of the deaths on the street for homelessness yeah, yeah. is shocking i remember there was like this winter has been nothing but the winter last year i remember like it was, it was something like about minus 12 or something like that when we were in london and it's like i saw somebody underneath the arches in the embankment and uh, and you know, like, you know, obviously they're no right. You know, what I mean, they're just like we have a little mm -hmm. blanket, and you're just thinking, you know, you should be somewhere warmer, but you know, they're they're, they're not in the zone of trying to look after. Yeah, themselves. it's heartbreaking. You know what I mean? When you first came down to London, what was your plans then? When you had a fiver, what were you? I think I just wanted goal? to be a pop star. It was basic shit, man. You know, I mean, I, I, when I got to about twenty two, I realised I wasn't very good at playing the bass, <laughs> so I stopped and started running. Uh, you know, I started, I started owned, I owned a little club, the living room. But yeah, the initial thing was when I got into music, which was about 10, uh, I was into Bowie and Slade and T-Rex, Roxy, you know, all these bands. I'd, I was obsessed by glam rock. And I started going to the Apollo when I was about 11. That's before your time, James. What age are you, James? Well, I tell you, I'm an Elijah age, but I'm 35. Right, well, you're, you're too young for the Apollo. But we all went to the Apollo, me and Bobby and, you know, Andrew, and we, we, we all we all went to. And I saw the gigs there, like, so amazing, amazing shows there. And I saw the Who at the Glasgow. The Who Club. are great. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I saw, saw everybody. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I got the love of music, got a bass, got, got into punk. Uh, you know, I had a lot of punk bands. I then ended, ended up in a Glasgow band for a while just before I came to London, H2O, who only had, had, had a big hit. Uh, and, and I moved to London with Andrew. And then we were just, we, we got there. And how we got the squat was there was a girl with pink hair and Clapham. And we went, 
can you, you know, like, do you know anywhere you can stay? And she went, oh, can you stay at mine? You know, we were like, and, and she was just a punk girl that just, you know, let us into her squat. And that was really the big break for us, was actually getting somewhere we could sleep. Because then we thought, well, we're not going back. Do you know what I mean? It's scary to think that if you never met that girl, you could potentially have been homeless and... Yeah, but to be fair, we would have found something, right? Yeah, but, survivors. But, That's a Glasgow but, mentality. But, but, I mean, we got lucky really early. Like the first, within 10 days, we had a score. Because you're best friends with Bobby Gillespie. Yeah, I grew up with So, him. were you at school together, you and Bobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were right, mate, King Spark school to meet each other. But supposedly, I was reading something the other day on some sort of internet forum that we're like the two most famous people to come out of King Spark secondary. <laughs> which is funny in itself, <laughs> because it's like... Do you know what? We hate school. I uh -huh. absolutely detested school. You know what I mean? And I think that goes for anybody watching that. Just because your standard grades or your A-levels or whatever mm. it is, you don't need to have the best to have a successful career. You don't need to be the think, smartest in the school I, I, to have the biggest and best I think, career. James, for my generation, that's 100% true. I don't know if the younger generation did. I think maybe you do. But I mean, but for... But for our, for, for our, we didn't have a choice. I mean, we, we came out with one level. We There was no expectancy on me or him. He was like a, he was in a, worked in a printing factory and I started working in a collar factory, you know, bringing a machine down and, and making collars. And uh, there was, we were factory fodder, working class kids. Mm -hmm. when we were just factory fodder. But what we did both have is this love of rock and roll, love of punk. And uh, when we got the chance, do you know what I mean? We, we both, we you know, we both done it. And they, uh, the great thing with Bob is, uh, you know, he used to design my sleeves and uh, when I first started the label. So he'd design the sleeves and, and do the sleeves, do you know what I mean, you know? Do you think if you weren't his friends, do you think being each other's best friends helped both your careers strive? Yeah, and big, hit time. The peaks? Uh, big time. Big time, because it was like, you know, because there was a lot of times that, you know, we just trusted each other. You know, we, 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 because we grew up with each other, we were never going to you know, fuck each other over, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, so it was like, it was an intense friendship, do you know what I mean? It, the, the downside of that, years later, do you know what I mean? You know, we hated each other's guts for five years, so it's kind of like an intense, we're kind of more like brothers and mates, do you know what I mean? You know, we're kind of like, he annoys me, I annoy yeah. him, but we love each other. But that's the I mean? sign of good friends, is yeah, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we live in a soft generation where people can't take a yeah. fucking joke, people can't take yeah. anything serious and then before you know it, yeah. they take the huff. Yeah. And I think if you don't speak to somebody for five years, but even at that stage they'd probably thought about him every day yeah. it's probably just stubbornness yeah. who's going to phone who first to, how yeah. did you end up speaking to again together after the five year I mean, it's a bit of a celebrity story but I'll tell you I, I was a, was a well, how did it start it was a petty fucking argument man it was like by text I was getting into DJ in Belfast and it was just it was one of these fucking stupid arguments and like we just, you know, idiots, both of us, and ended ended up we didn't talk to each other for about five years, and then, uh, and then I was up a mountain in a uh, in Spain with, with Bob Geldof and pals. With. And he turns around to me, and he goes, "Is that fucking Gillespie over there?" And I was like, "I think it is." And then I went on over with Bob, and then that was that. We're good mates again. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He was fine when I saw him, but I just didn't see him for five years, <laughs> and he's a fine now. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not the same, to be absolutely honest, James. It's different than it was, but it's okay, you know what I mean? I mean, he's a married guy with kids and, you know, I've got a family and all that stuff. So it's easy. But it used to be, we used to live in each other's pockets. It's not that anymore, but we're still good mates. We get older and people drift yeah, yeah, apart, but yeah. the best mates are the ones who you can phone after six months for a year and they'll be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's all right. But like you're, you're no shy to admit you've had drug abuse and drug yeah, problems yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that and substance abuse. When did that all start? When did you start getting into the drug scene? I suppose, you know, that was probably about 85, 86. Uh, I started dabbling with everything. And then, uh, and then, in 87, I started getting really properly tore in. And then, really, I was just, I was just a mess, really. Well, not a mess. I was, I was, I was I had a huge, had a huge success commercially. Do you know what I mean? Because I had, House of Love, My Bloody Valentine, Primals, um, you know, My Bloody Valentine, uh, Ride, all these bands that I had in that zone, Teenage Fan Club, and they were all having like big, big records, do you know what I mean? Screamadelica, Loveless, Bandwagon-esque. Um, and then it got to early 94. I mean, there was a lot of other stuff happened in that zone. I'm like, I, uh, I sold the company, half the company to Sony, 
at a certain point only because I was going bankrupt. But I'd had all these huge albums, I had three huge albums out in about two months, right? And they all were smashing it. Teenage Fan Club were breaking America. Um, and, and I was still having financial problems, do you know what I mean? Because it was like we started with no money, no seed money. We just started with a thousand pound bank loan in 1984. Uh, so I, uh, so basically I sold 51%, 49% of it to Sony. Uh, and we, we, we rattled on with it a bit, but the, it was a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, you know, drugs played their part in it. And it got early 94, and I just thought, I'm going to get off this, do you know what I mean? You know, and I went into rehab, and I came out, and then I was literally the most sober man in Britpop for the next fucking few years. <laughs> <laughs> Every other fucker was off the nut, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't off my nut. I was how, but how could you run, when you were on the drugs at the time, how could you run so many successful bands do you think that helped it for some weird reason in a reason? weird way at that point in my life to take away the pressure and the worry and yeah. The anxiety yeah yeah I, I did at that point was it coke was it charlie cocaine um booze um speed just you your suspects out. yeah 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 everything so but then in the 80s and 90s it was kind of the thing to do it was the drug scene was majorly yeah, yeah. kicking off there so it must have felt yeah. normal yeah Getting on it with everybody, we on it with all the bands and just yeah, everybody, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was the biggest party person at the label at that point. Do you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> it's like, but it was, it was just, it was, it was just what it was. I mean, it was a zone of like when I was in it, and then I got out of it, and then and it was quite difficult for people to get their head around the fact I'd changed. You know what I mean? You know, that is difficult for people. I was young though, James. I was thirty three. That's mm -hmm. a young time to get sober. I mean, what age did you get sober? 35. I get, I yeah. get sober. It's a 30, young, if, you, if you get sober in your 30s, it's very young. But I've relapsed two or three times. Yeah, I relapsed in, after that, I relapsed in um, 2002, 2003, when I was managing the Libertines. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I relapsed with the booze for a couple of years. But I've been sober ever since. Do you know what I mean? I've been sober. So was it 2004. I've basically been sober most of my adult life. Congratulations. Now, but, but Do you I think mean, it helps the mindset, Alan? 100%, James. I got off a prescription medication uh, in December and I've been on that for about 20 years and that was a uh, Valiums and um, and antidepressants and uh, it took me about a year to come off it a year and a bit but it's, I'm so I'm so grateful that I, I could have come well off done. I'm in a great I'm in a great headspace again well this is definitely a new chapter of your life yeah yeah yeah, yeah for everything you've came through when you were on the drug scene you signed Oasis when it was at 92 um 93. 93. Me, 93, I met them at King Tut's Wawa. One of the biggest bands in the world. Ever. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, you know, how, did, how did that become, How did that come about? It was a fluke, James. It's like, I was up, I was up the week before in Glasgow doing something, because I was massively into the Acid House thing. And I think I was still kind of going to the sub club and all that sort of stuff, uh, you know, early 90s. I think I'd been at the sub club the week before. And I'd realised that this girl that I was used to kick about with, it was in this band, Sister Lovers, Debbie Turner, I realised she was playing a, a, a first show at King Tut's Wawa Hut at the end of May. I think it was a bank holiday Sunday at that end, in the May 93. And I showed up. And when I got there, it was sort of kicking off with these mad Mancunians, you know, about 12 of them. And uh, and the security, a little bit, it was getting really feisty. And they were in this band. And I'd, I'd never heard them. But they'd come up on totally on the make. Did not, didn't know I was coming around because Debbie didn't know I was coming just to see if they could get on the bill. They jumped in the bus. And this was Oasis. And then, you know, I said to the promoter, which was DF, I think it was, and I said, oh, let them let them play four songs because it was all my bands that were playing. And I went on up just to make sure that they didn't beat my band up. You know, they had two little bands on. And uh, and Oasis played and they played four songs. And then I, at that point, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm signing them. Do you know what I mean? And then at the end, Coily, who was doing the Oasis sound, used to do the Teenage Fan Club sound. They, their tour manager threw him off because he'd been doing coke, right? And they, 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 so I went up to Coily. Coily loved me because I used to do coke with Coily. And uh, and I said to Coily, oh, like, who's who's the leader of the band? Who's the manager? And he went, oh, it's it's a, it's a um, no Gallagher. And I was like, all right, okay. And, uh, you know, I did not like no Gallagher, I know him, but like, and got presented with no. And I just went, oh, do you want, can I like sign you? Do you know what I mean? And uh, that was that. It. it was good because they were threatening to were they threatening to smash up the place? They were, it was it was they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't say it. It was by inference. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But they, 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 it would have been quite hard for the security to deal with because it was about two security and twelve manks. You know what I mean? 
because there was was a. It was under, easier to let them play. To be yeah, honest, you know I was I mean? a, was a YouTube who YouTube uh, YouTube YouTube management trying to sign them and double their salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was it a guy called uh, Malcolm at their record company, YouTube's record company, tried to double or treble the, the advance, and Andy McDonald at Codas tried to sign them. But to be fair, Oasis were always like that. No, no Gallagher in particular, very loyal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a, a massive band. Do you think yeah. if you never signed them, your career would be as it was? But you don't no, have to I mean, sign I mean, big bands. No, I'd, I'd done good up to that point. I'd done good as kind of I'd, I'd done as well as anybody else was doing. If you know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. uh, up to that point, as in the music business, that would have been like if you'd had Scream Adelica and Teenage Fan Club and blah blah blah. That would have been kind of cool, you know. I mean, I'd have been doing as good as anybody else was doing. If you know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. and then a. Uh, but then, I mean, Oasis, I mean, I think, it, well, I was involved with, I think we sold somewhat 60 million records, do you know what I mean? And it's still going. I think it must be about 100 million records. That's unbelievable. It's a, lot a guy of... for Kings Park. And yeah. that must make you proud. It must make you proud. But even though it's difficult because people who live that life, it doesn't seem as big. It's, yeah. It might sound weird, but yeah. because you've lived it, it might not seem as big. Liam Gallagher, Noel Gallagher, but for people looking at the outside, right. it is fucking phenomenal. Right. That is phenomenal. Yeah. I don't really see it like the way you're saying it, yeah. but I hear you. Because most people's reaction is like that, but mm. I don't... Because I suppose I've lived inside that bubble for a long time, do you know what I mean? I think the question that probably everybody wants to ask is, do you think they'll ever get back together? It is the question they have to ask mm. the whole time. No, I don't think in it... Not in the foreseeable future, James. Do you know what I mean? Maybe in years to come, maybe. But I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad blood between them at the moment. You know what I mean? Do you think it would they would ever be as big? I think it would be it would be big. Do you know what I mean? You know that's not. A, it's just you know try and get to the end of the gig without killing each other. Do you know uh -huh. what I mean? But you know if they did it, they'd still be good. I think. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got the social media, you've got the online platform. Yeah. They never had that in the nineties. No. And you look at how many albums they sold no, worldwide. Well, yeah. I mean, they were like. They, they went viral before you could go viral. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, literally, that just exploded. Do you know what I mean? It took everybody by surprise. When a bit, because I signed them May 93, and, and it actually didn't get them signed to about that, that October. It took me about five months to get them signed, but it's like, and then they, they did Nebworth August 96. So that was a really fast. They did Scotland, they did, they did Loch Lomond. Do you know what I mean? You know, it was like, really, they love Scotland. What's that? They love Scotland. Yeah, no, it's like, it was a really fast, um, it was a really, really fast, you know, ascension. Yeah. Because when you look at the two of them, the two of them are, they're both legends. They are. They're, yeah, yeah. They're, again, one of the biggest bands ever. Yeah, yeah. When you signed them, did you realise, when you first watched them, did you think to yourself, they're going to be massive, they're going to be No, I think I, I, the absolute opposite. I thought they're probably good for an album. And, the, <laughs> and, and, and and good for an album. If I get out before the Stone Roses second album, I might nick some of that audience. But I never thought it was a career band. I was just putting it out. I thought it's a good band. It's it's quite Stone Roses, you know, because it's it's, it's seen four songs, bang it out and see what happens, and it fucking exploded. Who was the worst one to deal with, Noel or Liam? Um, the one. I, 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 this is the real truth. I, I never had really bad experience with the Gallagher's at all. Liam was always nice and, and Noel was a gen. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You know, I've had more run ins with him post than during that. Do you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> because that's when you were at. Yeah, how did, when you signed them, you, were you still on the drugs at that point then, 93? I was, uh, I partied a few times with Oasis. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have lasted a good few months at a time. No, it, it, it was like when I signed him May 93, I got sober February 94, but I had a few good nights with him. Do you know what I mean? Would, what do you think the Oasis' best song is for yourself personally? Probably Slide Away. Do you know what I mean? For the early stuff, anyway. Uh, I love Slide Away. But I mean, I love I love lots of it. You know what I mean? It's a good band. For all the, the bands that you've had, who would you say was your best album ever? Uh, debut album? Well, debut is probably Oasis, definitely, maybe. But maybe the best album ever put out was Scream of Delica. Yeah. Primal Scream, yeah. Because Libertines and that are great as well. Yeah, yeah. I didn't actually put that out. I just managed them. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. The management game is phenomenal. <laughs> what you've you've achieved? Did you have that drive to be no, successful? Not really. I mean, I just wanted to. I just like music. I still do. I mean, I still manage Happy Mondays and Cast in Las Vegas. Do you know? I still manage a few bands, and I've got Creation going again as a seven-inch label, James, called Creation Twenty Three, and I've got a load of little bands. But and you know, I just do music because I want to do it, James. I'm like, Andy, it's doing it at fifty-eight. You're doing it because you want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Ultimately, you know what I mean? Because the people that 
most of the people that I grew up with and st- you know they've all quit now do you know what I mean because mm-hmm. like I suppose they don't love it as much as me I don't know do you know what I mean they, 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 most of them are fucked up you've got to have your passion for something it doesn't matter how much money you make or yeah. what you do if you've not got that drive or that passion yeah. to keep achieving to keep producing number one albums or yeah. to keep signing the biggest bands yeah. I mean, it's it's a bit different. I mean, you know, we're not I don't we're not really put that many records out in recent times, but but we're starting again with the little bands putting out like, putting out seven and singles. It's going to be good, you know. So what is the seven? What is that you're doing? I just I just say you know when I run into like there was it was out the Mondays in Australia when you contacted me, and uh, I am signing the the band that was out playing was in Australia, the Lulu Rays. So I'm just like I'm just having a, I literally James I'm having a good time at the moment. It's a good time in my life, clean and sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've been sober for a long time, but getting off the meds is big as well, man. Massive. Of course, and I always say that. I think, I think pharmaceutical drugs kill more people yeah. than any other drugs, so it can just be as bad. Yeah, just yeah. because a doctor prescribes it, it doesn't mean it's actually yeah. helping. And I understand that some people yeah. use it to maybe help their nerves or sleep or whatever yeah. medication they're on. But for me personally, yeah. the feel good factor in naturally yeah. being no, no, it's, clean. It's, it's big. We were talking before we you came on, before we came on, I said, talking about the mental health thing. And it's like, I think. I think, and you know, a lot of the drug stuff going on in music is mental health issues. I mean, I'd say that I've been plagued by mental health issues probably my entire life, but I've I've broken them, I've broken it down just by numbing it with drugs. Do you know what I mean? You know, so it's like you know, I think that's what I did. You know, how did you come off it all? Did you go to rehab or? Yeah, I went to rehab, really close to here actually. I went to the Charter Nightingale and a just next to a Paddington Station. You know, I went in there. Do you know what I mean? You know. Sorry, there was just somebody walking by there. Yeah, 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 right. But you're feeling great now. Yeah, I'm fucking. I mean, I'm, I'm, the, I'm. You know, it's weird coming off like even because you don't really think about it. You just think it's meds. But coming off the, the this prescription drugs, it's like you could feel yourself, you know, really booming, and you're like, oh, all right, I, I, this is what normality. Is. Energy. I, I haven't seen this space in my head for, for a, while. a long time. You know what I mean. Because it's trying to quiet the demons down. It's trying yeah. to quiet everything down in the mind, whether yeah. it's whatever we're thinking about. And we yeah. spoke about it earlier, about the, 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 the addictions. Yeah. It it does. We, we take drugs to sh- try and shut it up in here, yeah, whatever the fuck with overthinking. And I think with me, it was definitely, definitely that, you know, with, with you know when I was on coke and booze and all that. And then like, it's, it's been different times. I've, I've definitely used it to nullify myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's difficult. And, but you've done it. No, I know. I mean, that. I mean, the thing is, the interesting thing, James, for your program, because I know you, what you're trying to do, but you're going to reach people that are got addiction problems. I've, I've, I've been a drug addict. I've been a recovering drug addict. I've been an alcoholic, and all these different things. Like, and I've still had success. Do you know what I mean? And it's, you know, you can't if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you need to do. But it's a lot. The only thing I'd say is a lot easier to do it sober. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I wouldn't yeah. say. I mean, yeah. it's a bit like today meeting you today and getting here twenty to ten ready for you. It's like. You know, I mean, I'd, the old me would have been like, yeah, it'll show up at some point. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just like, out. You know I mean? <laughs> Stall out. Yeah, no. I think yeah. it's, um, it is, it's, it's definitely, it's a no better feeling than being clean and sober, but not necessarily yeah. because you're clean and sober. Yeah. Every day is a great day. We yeah. still have our moments. I still battle every fucking day. Yeah, yeah. Whatever problem or addiction yeah. I have, I still think about gambling. I still think about the drugs. Yeah, yeah. And Big Mark, who's gave us his place in Harley Street today. Yeah, yeah, yeah speaks about it when he tells his story but we're laughing we kind of yeah. get excited yeah. because we know how fucked up and crazy it was and yeah. sometimes everything does quiet down but again it's to stay in the right path and do big things do you think now that if you signed a band who are mad on the drugs you would try and guide them more and try and it's difficult I mean I had libertines and they were like off their nut do you know what I mean you know um, and you know I don't think you know I didn't get them sober let me put it that way you know what I mean um in some ways, I think, you know, if a band are just absolutely mad like that, you're probably only frustrating yourself because you can see that if they did it sober, they'd be like, they'd be in a much better place in their heads. Yeah. But but people, the, the thing is, it's like, you you know it and I know it. I mean, if you're not ready to get off, then there's no point in anybody berating you too much about it because it's like, it's, it's got, it comes to within, you know, if, yeah, you, if you're going to get sober. Definitely, you, know? you need to want to change yourself. And it's a bit like, it's, it, you know, the thing is, it's like, it's it's just a better place to be and you're, you're happier in your head mm-hmm. you know if you can, you can get off everything but anybody that takes drugs are escaping are hiding yeah, yeah, from yeah. normality they don't like life yeah. but yet when they take drugs 
they're all loud. But, all yeah, I mean, they're, they're, if we're being honest with each other, they're, they're scared of something, generally Definitely. Speaking. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're hiding because they're scared. Yeah. Do you know what I totally mean? agree. And all the biggest, baddest men out there who sit yeah. at parties and they, yeah. they think it's great. It ain't great because... Well, we've all done it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've totally done it. But it's like, but ultimately you're scared of something. That's really what you're hiding from. Mm -hmm. Normality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, was <laughs> fuck normality. <laughs> would, he, what would you class as a good manager then or a, a good record label? How would you, Because well, there doesn't seem to be a lot of... A lot of people seem to fall out a lot more now. Yeah. There's not doesn't seem to be a lot more loyalty in the industry. Yeah. How do you how would you say I think makes just, be, a good manager? just understand the group, try and try and facilitate what the group are trying to do. Um and you, you know, you can add your own experience and you can you know, if you understand the game, then you can you can make it wider for them, do you know what I mean? Definitely, but for you, you've you run one of the biggest le record labels in yeah, United Kingdom. I was mad. I got a really good run of the green. I think a lot of it though with James was I came along at the right time. Do you know what I mean? And I got there was a few lucky breaks. I got. Do you know what I mean? My best friend was Bobby Gillespie, who was like a fucking great music guy that had success with his band, which trained me up mm -hmm. to sign Oasis and deal with that. And I had six, seven years with Oasis. You know that I was like, you know, when it when it was like really like you know it was really intense in that 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 nineties period. Um, so you know, I got kind of I got lucky a couple. Yeah, of times. but I believe you make your own luck because you've got to roll the dice. Yeah, yeah. you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't yeah. take, and I know it's such a cheesy line. It's probably been seen and said everywhere. But yeah. if you never went to King Tut's, if you never, oh, no, I know you've spoke got to, to these places. You've got to open the doors, and yeah. you coming here today opens more doors for me because fuck's sake, Alan McGee's yeah. on that show. That's and well, you've got to be in it to win it. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's like you know, the fact is, in 1993 when I went into that place, I was probably the only person mad enough in the music business to be in Glasgow on a bank holiday Sunday night going to a show to see the fourth band on the bill mm -hmm. <laughs> even though it was, it was a fluke so you make, you do make your own luck to a certain extent do you think if you'd never signed Oasis that night then somebody else would have took them I think they would have got signed whether they look it was a perfect fit both ways you know they changed my life completely I'm not denying that but equally we gave them the we gave them the setting to be Oasis if they'd went into a more corporate structure I'm not sure it would have worked for them just as well. Yeah, as much I mean? as they've changed your life, you've also changed theirs. I, I contributed, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Are you still in contact with the guys? A little bit. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm great friends with Noel. We just haven't seen him for about a year. Saw him uh, at a Gorillaz gig when he was jumping up and I was with Sean Ryder, who I manage. I saw him. I haven't seen Liam for a bit. I'm DJed for him last year, but I never saw him at the gig. So, you know, but we're, we're all, we're actually all right. You know what I mean? You know, so when I see them, I see them. I oh, they're good. It's still good when you see them, you see them. <laughs> and that's good. Do you think you'll ever find a band is as big? Are you no. on the hunt for somebody? As no, I mean, I've or... always had my, on the hunt for great new stuff, but I mean, I don't think it's not, it's not, no, it's, I don't think anybody could be as big as that anymore. It's like, that was a phenomenon that culture, want, it was post acid house, all the club kids wanted like, wanted a rock band and tunes and it was just culture which just decided that they wanted something at that point and that was Oasis and it blew up I don't think I don't think everything could come together again like that mm -hmm. do you know what I mean Divine Timing was that you Divine know? Timing just yeah I mean it, was, it, was, it wasn't time. for that long it was only for two or three years but it was massive at that point what was the script with the drummer the first album The Boy Who Got Sacked what I, was that story that was just you know I don't think the way they were going with their music you know, I think he'd have probably struggled to, to be the drummer. I think it was as basic as that. Do you know what I mean? Just wasn't I, I, I actually, to his credit though, I actually really liked the drumming in the first album because it's so punk. Mm -hmm. But, but I don't think when you got to the bigger songs in the second album, I don't think uh, he'd have really been able to do it. But 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 the what, what I do, I feel sorry for him getting that far along the journey up to some might say, and then no telling him he's out the band. Do you know what I mean? It was cruel. You know. What I mean? Of course, but sometimes the progress and if you see a weakness or you see something yeah, can no, strengthen it's up. It's just the way it is. It's like, it was, but it's a cruel twist of fate, you know course, what I mean? You know? Especially with the success they had. Yeah, 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 yeah. After that. Yeah. Because you're running, Glass Vegas, how are they getting on? It's good. It's like, you know, it's like James, it's like, you know, we, they need to do a gig for about three or four years, do you know what I mean? And uh, and I found them initially, again, at King Tots. <laughs> uh, and, and, <laughs> I need to get myself down to know, King Tots. I know, I know. It was in 2006, James. And uh, I, I was a, uh, they were like third on the bill. And I'd, I'd been talking to his sister, who, who's the co manager. And, uh, you know, and I went, saw it. It was great. And then I kind of like, I was like really down with him and everything. And uh, then I went off to bring up my daughter 
2008 in Wales for five years and uh, they went on and trundled through being in Las Vegas and then about a year and a half ago we all got in contact with each other again properly and I, I met them in Glasgow and then like I, I've ended up going back into management uh, with, with the sister you know so we, we managed Las Vegas together. Do you think there's anybody coming through the ranks just now in the UK? Or? There's some good bands, some good little bands. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I've got a few, and there's like this, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got three or four really good ones, and they, you know, some good bands like in England, Idol, Shame, Ireland, Fontaines, DC. There's some good bands. Is there any bands that you've seen and you thought they're just as good as Oasis, but never reached the heights potentially? Well, I don't know. I mean, I should have... Yeah, there's loads of bands that go half the way there. But usually there's a personality default in the middle of that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like somebody's kind of like, no quite right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just like anything in life, isn't it? Is there a lot of bands that they like to drink, they like to party is it, and fight? And is that, yeah. that's, that's the kind of... Yeah. The scene for the like, punk rock stuff in the... Yeah. Well, I mean... Is that I, no tiring? Is it no... Do you go, fuck me, it's like really so much like that anymore, James. It's like... It's more like... You know, if anything, they're all worried about their careers. It's, it's like give us some of these old style bands that, that are mm -hmm. a bit mental because at least they're, they're, you know, at least they're spicy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you know think that buys it though? People buy that the the bands that don't give a fuck. The ones that just I think so. It's got you've got to have the tunes though. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the, the Libertines got away with it because they had the tunes. No matter how mental Peter was or Carol was, you know, they had the tunes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So what's your plans for the future? Where do you see yourself? I just, I'm just going to keep keep doing it, James. Do you know what I mean? You know, I'm going to, uh, you know, I want to I want to develop the label a little bit. Uh, you know, put out some more records. Um, it, you know, it, I'm on the lookout for maybe another couple of bands to manage that are more established. Um, I'm going to do this Q and A tour this year, next year. Um, I'm, to be honest, I'm just kind of having a good time doing it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's good. You know, I'm in London mainly to try and keep my son sober. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I'm really up to. You know, I'm down here, you know. And, and I'm in London a lot more because of that. You know what well, I mean? Fingers crossed because, like I say, you're on a good path. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, doing yeah. good things. You can think yeah. straight and... Yeah. Because it can be difficult, especially London. It's 100 mile an hour. I, I try to say hello to two people today and it's kind of as if you've just threw shit in their face. It's, <laughs> a, it's a kind of... It's, it's, I love it down here. It's yeah, like, yeah. It is a buzz, but nobody smiles. They forget to live. They forget to take. Too busy. They're too busy trying to get to their meeting. And they're <laughs> just. Um, it's. It's a. Uh, I love it, but look, I'm in Harley Street interviewing Alan McGee. Do you know what I mean? I've came a long way, and it's great. But it's the first time I've been in Harley Street, not seen a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see many? Back in the day, oh, many yeah, psychologists. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, there's, there's one just literally is just down the corner. One of the main guys in in London is a guy called Keith Stall that I have seen a few times, and he's just down that Wigmore Lane, literally down there. It's a beautiful street. I mean, literally, about ten yards away from this front door is his street. I was laughing when I was going. I know that street. That is a cracking street, but this is the, the street for the big, the big, the biggest clinics in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All the plastic surgery, all the yeah, psychologists. Yeah. Again, but there's a psychologist probably here, 1,500 quid an hour or whatever. But Not quite, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're up the arse out it, don't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. So for your plans and to create... I'm just going to keep going, James. I mean, I want to do it till I'm 75, 80, but if I can get away with it. Have you got a time limit on it? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm like, I swim every day, man. I'm like, I'm really healthy at the moment. I'm like, I swim every day. You know, I mean, I've kind of got my joy of life back. You know? How's your eating? Great, man. I was like, uh, like totally healthy way I'm, like, I'm no coffee coffee's a big one actually every day it's going oh i'll have a cup of coffee an addiction. i think it i think it gets your gut and i think your gut's got an intelligence weirdly it makes your whole body go like that mm. get off the coffee well your gut's connected to your uh, brain your gut's yeah. the same material as your brain i think that's so. why when you get your, right? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you get a gut feeling yeah. it's actually your second brain telling you yeah so it's all connected it's all made of the same material but, but coffee gives you that anxious thing and no meat i'm off the meat i green machines all the time vegetarian I, I, yeah, but pescatarian. I take fish. That fish, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I'm on that, that apple cider vinegar. It's great, man. Fuck's sake, Alan, you've went full, <laughs> you've went full health kick, haven't you? But what, I'm the same, apple cider vinegar with hot water. Yeah. I was vegan, yeah, yeah. but I love chocolate. I yeah. love chocolate and yeah. I went vegetarian. I've, yeah. I've dug a Do bit. Do you know who it was that told me about apple cider vinegar? It was Bez. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it basically. Happy Mondays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said to me, because he goes, McGee, get on apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whatever, Bez. And then my missus actually said to me, you need to get on apple cider vinegar. Because mm -hmm. I did colitis a couple of years ago. And, and, it, and it changed my diet. And, ch you know, what got on apple cider vinegar. And it totally changed me. So it cleans out your gut. Yeah, yeah. It cleans yeah. out everything. Yeah, There's yeah. so many remedies. And that's where yeah. I don't. That apple cider vinegar, I got off stomach meds and everything because of that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. The old stuff is a wee place I go to in Glasgow called Roots and Fruits. And yeah. I got all that stuff. And but it's weird, isn't it, now that, you know, you like the, the other, the rock and roll generation are now all, we're all into kind of eating healthy and mm -hmm. drinking and like, drinking healthy, you know what I mean? Is Bez clean and sober? Is he... no, he's not, I don't really call him clean and sober, but he's actually, he's actually, you know, he is into all the different. The, the health stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's remedies for everything. I think because of the internet, there's so much more research yeah. where you can actually look into things because we're we're just uneducated. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're yeah. used to the, the pieces and sausage with hundreds yeah. of tomato sauce and <laughs> big bottles. Of, <laughs> it's you know what I mean? pieces and sausage. <laughs> I should keep, spend more time in Glasgow because <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've not got them down here. I, I, no, no, but it's just that nobody says pieces and uh, sausage because we went oh, across the road. It's Steph, yeah. what was that place we went to across the road? Prep. Steph yeah. roll, it was like we roll and sausage. Yeah. And Glasgow get like crispy rolls and some modern <laughs> rolls. They're beautiful. It's just, I, I think there's more research now. I think people are just uneducated but, at what they're eating or what they're drinking. Even drugs. When you're taking drugs, you don't know what the fuck you're putting up your no, nose. Terrible. I mean, I, I now when I think about my time going, I mean, like you know, especially in America, just what, what was I doing? You know what I mean? We taking a lot of drugs in America. Yeah, I was everywhere. You know what I mean? Take crazy. That's it, but that was it. That was the lifestyle that yeah, yeah. kind of glitz and yeah. glitz and glam lifestyle. And a lot of people who look from the outside think, "I want that life." No realizing yeah. there's more people with mental health issues yeah. that are famous than anybody. I think you're in right. the world. I think you're right because, and, and in, in a way, people, you know, you can now tell when people are having issues. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's like you know because people are calling it what it is. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. When people are having meltdowns, it's like it's not because they're a diva, because they're no right. Do you know what I mean? You yeah, know? because. Fame is an illusion. It doesn't yeah, really yeah. exist. Yeah. It's people, a useless currency. Yeah, it's, people you know I mean? say, oh, he's looking for fame or he's yeah, doing yeah. this. Fame doesn't mean fuck all, yeah, but yeah. I think when people are on a pedestal and people are, are craving their attention, once people don't crave their attention as much, they start thinking their life's inadequate. They don't yeah, feel yeah, as yeah. important. And that's when they either dabble on drink or drugs to feel yeah. important again. Because you look at girls like, Amy Winehouse, what a talent. Yeah, what yeah, a, yeah crazy. What a absolute great talent. And yeah. you'll see a lot but, of well, I've had some of my pals, so it's like, you know, Robert Young throw up in Primal Screen, died at 49. I mean, loads of people with that have just went, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, biggest party guy in our whole thing, our whole, you know, our whole um, scene coming through to London and everything like that and, you know, ended up dying, you know what I mean? Has anybody ever tried to come out and speak out about like, the, the the band kind of scene and the, the like, because it was socially acceptable to go to hotels, smash them up. But you know what, James, party. it's bigger than that. It's like, I remember the first time you get, when you're a little guy in a band or a manager in a band, when when I was managing the Mary Chain, when I was like 23, we 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 got we blew up. And I was a manager and you'd go into like Nottingham Rock City and you'd open the fridge and there'd be 50 beers. And you're 23 and it's all for free. You're like, are they free? Do you pay for them? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, that's, and like, so the culture is, take what you want. You've travelled the world. Where's the best place you've been to? Where's the best place that you you love and the best yeah. people that ha you've had a good band and the, the the fans are great and um I don't know, mate. It's like I, I mean, I just visited Australia last last week. Uh, that was great. I was, that was a sold out Happy Mondays tour in Australia. That was great. Maybe Japan, man. I love Japan. I'm going there in about three weeks' time to DJ. So what yeah. do you do? What kind of stuff do you DJ? I, I just, I just whatever, whatever really. For that thing, it'll be kind of dancey. Be much more, more like an old acid house set, acid house kind of set for the nineties. But it's like a late eighties. But you know, I mean, it depends who's booking us. Do you know what I mean? If it's a load of fucking Britpop kids, I'll, I'll, I'll play. You know what I'll play? I'll play Oasis, the yeah, Libertines, yeah. the Beatles. You know what I mean? You know. How has your style of music changed as you've got older? Have you, the, how does it no, progress? Kind of, Are no, still... because, it, because I'm still turned on by the same music. I'm still turned on by glam and punk. That's what I'm into. Mm -hmm. Does, do you think there's anybody coming through the ranks again? I've, I know I've asked the question in the UK, but worldwide, is there anybody that sticks out for you? Yeah, that's, that's good. Just good new bands. It's like you just, you know, you can never, you just got to keep aware because you can never tell who's going to be great. I remember when I first heard Nirvana and I was like, you know what I mean? You know, you know, and they were fully formed. I was like, how did I not hear this before? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. The way you be thinking, everybody's yeah. different. It's, I mean, when somebody... That's a great time for, for music 
James, the nineties was just it's so many great bands, you know, like the obvious ones are like Nirvana and Oasis, but it's like but it, it's it have so many great bands for the nineties, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh aye, eighties, nineties queen. Yeah, eighties eighties was great. Yeah, but who would you say was the big take away Oasis, who would you say was the biggest band of all time? Um well they're not the biggest band of all time, but they're big. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for me <sighs> The Beatles, probably, ultimately. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Queen and that were amazing. Amazing, yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked them. Yeah, the Beatles, I think they're still number one bestseller yeah, yeah. worldwide. Yeah, because it's like, it's a never-ending sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's like, and I think they got so popular, there's a, there's a reversion of copyright after 50 years. I think they've had to change the laws to make it 75 years because the Beatles are still popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did Michael Jackson have the rights to their songs? Or he had the publishing rights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that must have been worth hundreds and yeah. hundreds. I met someone. Michael Jackson. Did you? Yeah, I did meet him. Yeah. Where? I met him twice. The first time was in nineteen ninety two. It's before the paedophile shit, and because uh, he came, I think it was he was outed as a paedophile initially, but nineteen ninety four, and I just signed to Sony with Creation, and they said, "Oh, come to Japan to meet everybody," and I flew to Japan and a week in Japan. At the end of it, Michael Jackson had been doing eight nights at the Tokyo Dome. Right, and they, uh, and and I, I was, and Bobby was in town. I think Bobby was playing a show, and Bobby wanted to go, and I didn't want to go. And they went, they went, Gillespie's not coming, right? but we'll have the gay, oh, because they thought I was more sane. <laughs> foolishly, right? Fuck with their wrong. And and uh, and and then we we went through all the security, and they uh, we we get taken in, and then. We've put in this room of like people wanting to meet Michael Jackson. I was the only person in the room that didn't want to meet Michael Jackson. And so Sony were picking five people to meet Michael Jackson. And I went, Alan McGee, create on records. And I, and I went through, I mean, he's really tall, Michael Jackson. And it was like a photo opportunity. And they never sent me the photo. Right? And uh, you had to announce yourself to Michael Jackson. And, I went, and when I get nervous, I get really Scottish. Right? And I went, Oh, Mickey, creation record. And I'm like, Michael Jackson's looking at you fucking freak. <laughs> and I got, I met him that time. And then, they, just for a photo. And then they, the next time I met him was about 96. And I, I was getting on Concord. And I, I, there was a guy, a, a really high up British, British Air Base kind of guy, went, are you with Michael? And this was something early, early uh, January 97, I think it was. And we went, yeah, we're just taking a piss, me and my pal. And we went on up the back, and it was, this is when I kind of knew he was a paedophile, though, right? There was, um, there was Michael Jackson, I bet, I mean, there was four security, two security, two or three security, I think, a manager guy, I think, or a tour manager guy, Michael Jackson, and about a 14 or a 15 year old guy dressed as Michael Jackson on Concord. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's fucking weird. Do you know what I mean? Because who's who travels with one of their fans dressed mm -hmm. up as them? And you had to go at that point. That's not right. Do you know what I mean? It's not right. I think he's there's never any smoke without fire. Yeah, that's Michael, what I think. Do you know that what I mean? Point, I've always and sort it, of known yeah. he's not right. Well, in the back of your mind, but then you look at guys like Jimmy Savile who yeah. they've just got a question mark. You're just looking at them, they've got a question mark, but they were yeah. loved. And it's hard because he's never had a conviction of Michael Jackson and he's not here to fight his case. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's interesting all the stuff it's just yeah it's all this stuff there but there's again there isn't any smoke without fire but for me i think he was young himself and apparently he was castrated that they like, um they like, basically took his balls away so they could keep his this is just stories that are getting about so they could keep his voice so young is that right so he never really fully matured yeah, right, right, and right. i think i get it's such a touchy subject that it's so mixed but again that industry that industry is it is rife yeah with it and yeah, it's sad to think that because he's he was the biggest he was the biggest artist out of them all. Yeah. He was but the I biggest mean, entertainer. I mean, all I know, James, is that I actually met him a couple of times. The second time I met him, he was a fifteen year old, fourteen year old boy dressed. Yeah, how how was he when you met him? Like, was he, it weird he, then? He, he, we didn't see really say anything to him. We just we just kind of looked at him and we looked at him. Do you know what I mean? But we we were just thinking, you know, me and my pal Ed Ball, we were just thinking fucking weird guy man I mean That's, who, who yeah. would fly about with a uh -huh. 14, 15 year old version it's the, yeah it's the fact maybe a that, guy that was into that would but yeah. I mean weird but we were like that's too weird but it's a bit blatant and it? it's a bit out there well he was in I think it was in the sun like, I think it was something like the mirror of the sun the day like Michael Jackson with, it didn't, they didn't even say he was with a young boy it was just like it was going through the through the 
the airport at Heathrow, I think we landed. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a touchy subject and it's hard to think, but again, it's, yeah. it's just one of those fucking things that people are are kind of mad in that industry that people do go kind of nuts yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean it's yeah, yeah. was there anybody you've met you've met a lot of A-listers in your time yeah, yeah. was there anybody you were starstruck with or want, really want to meet yeah one time I was in the dressing room uh, the only time ever really that I have been starstruck if you want to call it that I didn't know what to say it was a uh, I was in it was in Glasgow again it was in the SEC and a teenage fan club supporting Neil Young and Neil Young came in the dressing room for about 10 seconds and walked out and I was like <laughs> <laughs> another time I was in Glasgow I was at the what's that wee posh gaff uh, uh, oh, is it one what's that hotel up in the West End oh one Devonshire Gardens one Devonshire Gardens I was staying there right and uh, James Brown had been playing the SEC the night before and I walked into the room and it was an empty it was an empty room it was a posh version of this room and sitting there was James Brown like, like up in the chair and I was like and I thought and I just walked out because <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't know what he say. what do you say to James Brown that's another loving legend James I know. Brown I've been, I've been there a couple of times I've went I'm not doing this do you know what I mean he's not uh, but usually I'm okay usually I'm just like how you doing the American why are the American stars so big over there like your James Browns your Marvin yeah. Gaze back in the day the, the stardom that they had was I don't know because like, America's so big as well yeah. Just as you know, I suppose once you get to that level, it's you know you don't fall down, so it's a bit. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're up there. But your Stevie Wonders, they're, they're yeah, massive, brilliant, massive brilliant. Yeah, yeah. guests. Was there anybody from the UK that went to America and never cracked it that you thought should have cracked it? I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, there's loads of people should have cracked America. I mean, Oasis should have cracked America. They'd done okay, but I mean, they should have got absolutely massive in America. You know, loads of bands. Most British bands should have should have cracked. It's always weird British bands crack America, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But did not? Yeah, is it because David of, Gray or something? Did like, not like? Why, why is that? Did not like the the personalities or the music? I think what it, it is. I mean, the old school America. I'm not so sure anymore if it's like this, but the old the British bands were too they were too outspoken, really. Generally mm -hmm. speaking, for America, they don't they they don't really want anybody with their own opinion. Do you know what I mean? You know, the Americans don't really act like that. They don't really do they? But like, yeah, but I mean, it's it's. I mean, you go to see Bruce Springsteen and and you know in like New Jersey, and there's like he's in an arena. He's doing five nights at an arena in New Jersey, and there's not one black person there. Do you know what I mean? It's a weird country. Do you know what I mean? Know. It's all everybody's like white and about forty year old. Do you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, it's so big. It's fucking massive. Yeah. So you're loving life, you know, you're doing well, you're in a good place. I'm, I'm in a good place. I mean, I mean, I could be doing better, but I mean, I always say that. How come? I know, I just like doing things, do you know what I mean? Do you, do you like to keep busy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that to quiet and keep the mind at bay? No, I think it's just, I just, I'm addicted to doing shit. Did do you know? ever goal set or anything or plan no, what you no, were going to I, do? Or... No, I just get on with it and done it and done it. Just... I was thinking about this recently when I was a kid, before I got, got a break in the music business, maybe 22, because I, I got and got, started to happen at 23 because I managed the Mary chain we blew up and then I was in like California playing 4,000 people managing the band it was like mad but I, mean, I suppose when 21, 22 I used to think it'll be my year next year do you know what I mean so I suppose it was a wee bit like that and then when it happened you just get into it only fools and horses this time next yeah, year yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? but I think, yeah but I think I was a bit like that when I was a kid do you know what I mean but you've done it yeah you've, you've fucking done, done it you've, yeah, yeah. you've not done it right, man you've done it for, for Kings Park to Harley Street is there any bands you would have loved to have got that you you think I could have took them even further than well I mean I don't know what if were. I could have taken them further who knows but I'd love to have worked with Stone Roses one of my favourite bands do you know what I mean um, but yeah I mean a lot of the punk bands I was just a bit young for it do you know what I mean really do you know what I mean because was, like the time I got there they, they, were, they were kind of on the descent uh, but I mean, I love a lot of that punk stuff. I love, I love, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I just love all the main bands. You're very well liked, but Alan, does that that must help in the industry though? What's that? Sorry? You're very well liked, right? You're very well respected, right? Uh, so if you're trying to open doors for people, then yeah, people will give you that. Yeah, I mean, I, I get on all right with people. You know, what I mean, you know, like, luckily I've not pissed too many people. Yeah, but I've got, there's a few people out there, James. It's not that hard to find. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> I'm actually related to most of them <laughs> because your management skills, though, yeah. they must be, they must be second to none. Even though you might not think it, yeah, the, you must have something to yeah. to have created all those yeah. bands, to created hundreds and millions of albums yeah. sold. I know we just shut the fuck up. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't know when to shut the fuck up. I don't, up. I don't. You can be sitting here all day. Half, half of it's that. Half it's just shut, shut up at the right point. And listen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Have you got a lot of family back in Glasgow? Yeah, I've got a few. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've got sisters and everything. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Well, my sister Susan watches you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I love that because I messaged you, and you were actually going to message yeah, me. Yeah, I was. I was. Well, that was great because I was watched. I watched the Paul Ferris one, the Joe Steele one. I watched Kyle the, for the View one. Uh, I watched. I think I watched another one, and I thought I, I, I should contact James. I nearly done it before I went to Australia. Then I was in Sydney Harbour, walking around in a day off at Sydney Harbour, and it was like, Alan. I've run a podcast and I came back immediately. I mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, Steph, how long have you watching your podcast? <laughs> and then we've come down to London and, and yeah. here we are. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I've got questions. All right, mate. For the fans, we've got three questions. We've got one from Sean Bryce. Your best, I think I've actually stole the guy's fucking question. The best debut album from any band you signed? Probably Oasis. Definitely, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me just think. No, it's got to be that one as a debut. Yeah. I, I think it's the best album anyway. Mm -hmm. Great album. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you still listen to that stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, occasionally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does yeah. it bring back a lot of emotions when you hear it? No, only good ones. Do you know what I mean? You know, it like, was a happy time ultimately, you know what I mean? What about like Wonderwall when they were writing that? Do you see when you listen to that for the well, first I only time? Heard you know? it, I heard the very first time I ever heard that, James, was a was you know, before it was just getting mixed, they'd recorded it with Owen Morris. And I, I got it, and it it was like, oh, this is amazing. Do you know what I mean? This is going to blow up, blow up. You know, I mean, because it, it was really commercial. And like, we're going to have it away. Mm -hmm. You know, but I didn't, didn't hear it before that. That's crazy. Um, we've got another question from Graham Bell. Was there a band you could have signed but never, only for them to become massive under an R label? Well, you like this, James? It's like it's like a. I was watching Chelsea, Crystal Palace, uh, with my pal Russell Warby. And uh, and he goes to me, it's about 1998, and he goes to me, you know Dave could all really likes you? And I went, all right, I like him, right? And he went, he, he goes, he goes, he, he goes, he'd love to bring the Foo Fighters off EMI and onto Creation. And I secretly thought, they're not cool enough, right? So I went, I'm not interested, and I should have done it, do you know what I mean? Because I was so obsessed in the 90s with being fucking cool. And it's like, I should have just went, they're going to... Because it was, it was, it was kind of not that difficult to think they might become fucking massive, mm -hmm. and they did, and they did. Do you know what I mean? So I should have signed them. <laughs> we'll have regrets sometimes, don't That's we? That's one of them. Uh, we've got another question from Reese Mullen. What do you think of the music industry today, particularly rock and indie, and its future? How do you see it? I think musically, the rock and indie things going through a slight resurgence now. You know, I think it's starting to reestablish itself. It'll probably in the next few years, a few bands will break out of that. But I think the music industry's changed so much. It's a digital music business now. Do you know what I mean? Look at this show here now. You get two cameras, one guy mm -hmm. doing it. You know, it's, it's just it's mm -hmm. it, compact's the word for the music industry now, isn't it? Yeah. You but you've got there's a, there's more opportunities though I think so. for people yeah. and yeah. there's more opportunities and more platforms to get yourself out there yeah. to get your music. You know, yeah. you don't necessarily yeah. necessarily need to have a manager now. A lot of people yeah. are doing their stuff online where they're getting millions and millions of hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how to work the social media kind of stuff? You well, get used to I mean, it? I'm not brilliant at it, but I mean, I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably better than it than I think. I mean, I've got about forty two thousand people following me mm -hmm. on Instagram, so I probably do know what I'm doing, but I don't think I do. Do you get a lot of a lot of Oasis questions all the time? No, I just get lots of mad people going, "Listen to this music." <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. Do you get embarrassed or do you get kind of because? My show's kicking off, it's no as big as I want it to be, but I yeah. know how, well, when people stop me in the street and I get embarrassed and I see dick things like your show's doing great and I go, oh, I can know. I feel like I get embarrassed. Yeah. You know, I get embarrassed. But that's just, that's, that's just a kind of thing about people ourselves that have been through drug addiction and all that mm -hmm. stuff that we're no good at taking, you're doing good. Mm -hmm. And like, because yeah, 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 I don't, I don't take compliments particularly well. Do you know what I mean? Because it, because I've probably deep down don't have a huge, self-esteem so when somebody goes you're you're you're, you're going oh you've done whatever, or whatever. Mm -hmm. nobody really you know most people don't really like it because when you were on your drugs and you were signing these bands yeah. when you signed oasis did you ever feel i feel like sometimes i don't deserve it sometimes what i'm doing through homelessness yeah. or suicide or i was amazed to that. Show. i was actually more of i don't i didn't think i don't deserve it i was more thinking fuck how did that happen do you know what i mean really mm -hmm. so i was like fuck i got that right 
Because you don't really yeah. think you're going to do it. You, 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 you go along doing it and you do the right things, but you know it's a crap shit. Was that a whirlwind? Yeah, I mean, the whole, but I mean, since I've come to London, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been the best move I've ever made. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Clearly, I mean, I love London. Yeah. I mean, it's like it might be unpopular to say it in your show, but I do love London. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I love London. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, great. It's yeah. just the people. It's not like Glasgow it's a bit people. It's expensive at the moment. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't think it's getting cheaper anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah, you know I mean? it is. It is. Yeah. We we drove down here, and it's yeah. But again, this is a, this is a hustle and a grind. You've been there. You've done it. You've yeah, had yeah, to yeah. tell the tale. And well, you know, when you were saying that to me, James, you were saying, "Oh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's hustle." And is it? See, I, in a way, I block it out. I just mm -hmm. do my thing, so mm -hmm. I don't really know. Do you know what I mean? Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. It's just casually doing yeah. it. Because I know you're doing a lot of Q&As now. Yeah, Have yeah, you yeah. one booked for Glasgow? Anything yeah, for Glasgow? Yeah, looks, I think it's, I think it's the 11th of April. Because people, yeah. are, when I, obviously when I said that you were yeah. coming on the show, everybody's jumped on the bandwagon asking their yeah, questions yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're buzzing for it, but you're doing a lot of Q&As now in the UK, yeah, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Well, I, how that came about, James, was I did, uh, I did one at the British Music Explosion last year in Liverpool and I got put up in line and from that, I got offered Helensborough and Irvine, which I do a couple of weeks' time. And I put them uh, up the posters, up the one sale sort of thing. And then suddenly a guy went, oh, I'll be your agent. And I went, all right, see what you can do. And then he's booked 33 shows. So suddenly I've got a tour. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You enjoying that? Yeah, it's good. You know what I mean? I like being busy, to be absolutely mm -hmm. honest. Do you know what I mean? I like doing stuff. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And for coming on the show today, mate, is... It's great and hey, no, it's good to you, giving mate. me your time and yeah, don't be that. I'm, it's good, I'm grateful, mate. I am yeah, truly grateful you. and yeah. for telling your story, Alan. Yeah, it's been. Uh, I really appreciate it, yeah. and you're doing great. We're so yeah. so bad at it, and, and and all the best for the future. And thank no you. doubt we'll be seeing much more of each other. So but thanks I mean. a lot, mate. And I just want to give a shout out to my main sponsor, um, Collins Morgan. My boy Chris has just had a, a baby son. He's missing him and he's missing. So congratulations, and also. Sponsored this show with Select Blinds. We'll have an advert at the end of this also, so take a wee check at that and hope you enjoy the show. But Alan, again, thank you, mate. Right, mate. It's been a pleasure. Be a good, man. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click the notifications button so you're notified for when my next video goes on my channel. You can also catch me on Twitter at James English Zero or Instagram at James English Two or Facebook at James English Eleven. You can also download these podcasts on Podbean or iTunes. I just want to say thank you to my sponsors, Fire Suppression Scotland and Select Blinds for also sponsoring this episode. For all your fire safety requirements, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, fire risk assessment, fire doors and also CCTV, Fire Suppression have your safety as their main priority. For inquiries, you can contact them on 01698 Two zero zero five six two, or email on info at firesuppressionscotland.org. At Select Blinds, if you want to find something unique, then Select Blinds is a place for you. They take pride in their ability to manufacture blinds to order, using a range of materials and fabrics. They can take your needs, specifications and instructions to use them to create blinds of any colour or style. If you're looking for something that you've seen in a catalogue, then they keep a range of popular blinds in stock, each of which can be modified and sized to fit your windows perfectly. Whatever they're looking for, an individual item or something that's off the shelf, Select Blinds will give you that ideal choice. When you make a purchase at Select Blinds, the delivery and fitting is also free of charge. So for inquiries for Select Blinds, give them a call on 01236 443 636. Or drop them a message on Facebook page, Select Blinds and Shutters. AM Events are specialists in party wedding and event planning management. They offer services from full event planning and management right down to the standalone venue dressing. AM Events strive for 100% customer satisfaction every time from email updates and how about the planning is going, managing the day of the event. They will support you the whole way through. So for more information to make a booking, pop down to their showroom at Unit 2, Foundry Street, Atlas Industrial Estate in Glasgow. Their phone number is 0141 237 3020. So pop along or else their social media pages are on Facebook, AM Events and also Instagram at amevents.glasgow.